Hello, in this video we're going to create the parsing table for this nice, nice state machine. Before we create the parsing table, we need state numbers for each of our states in here. So I'm writing them down. You don't need to follow this. This is just a basically random numbering. Okay, here we go. And here's our parsing table. We have all our possible real inputs, the A, C and D. And we have the end of input, the dollar sign. And we have the non-terminal symbols, the variable stuff here on the right side. If you look at other explanations, sometimes you have written action in here and go to in here just as a side note. Okay, let's do this together. We're in state number one. Oh, last note. Usually people start with state number zero, but I find this um, kind of very hard to read because you have two circles. So I always start in state number one, but um, you can choose this freely or obey your teacher. Okay, that being said, state number one, we can have input S. Input S here, so input S, state number one, and you will go to state number two, so we just write a two in here. Go to state number two, maybe that's better. Okay, if you have the input A here, then you're going to be in state number three after that. But it's not that easy. In this case, we have a so-called shift because our pointer shifts one to the right. So we have shift and go to th state number three. Okay, state number two, we can have the dollar, which will, I don't know how to say this in English, accept the state machine, maybe? So I'm just making this check over here. That means everything is finished when we have a dollar after the S. Let's care about state number three. We have the input B, then we end up with well, state number three, input B, then we end up in state number four, so go to four. When we have the input C, we go to six, state number six, and like I said before, the pointer is moving, so we have a shift, and we end up in state number six. When we have a D, we have a shift, because the pointer shifts again, and we end up in state number five. Let's look at state number four. Now it's getting a little bit more interesting. Now we have a reduction. We don't have any input anymore. We have a reduction by rule number one. Already a very special case here. Not because it's special, but because it's very unspecial. And if you look at some other explanations, they will do very dirty stuff like this. Programmatically and logically, that's totally fine and maybe good especially for optimization, but it's not clean design. So actually the reduction is only at the dollar. Why is that? Because you see the S standing on the left side of the arrow and the follow of S, the follow set of S is just the dollar sign. I will explain this or I explained this in another video. Check out the video about the follow stuff, follow and first, then you will understand that and you will only make the reduction to the first, uh, to, sorry, to the follow of this symbol over here. In this case, because we don't have any shift in here, any other thing that we can do in here, it doesn't make any difference if we only have it here or in any case. But if you have a shift, then you have to make the, then you have to distinguish between the two cases. Okay, that being said, let's go on to state number five. Let's look at state number five. Again, we have a reduction. And as we just learned, we now have to care about the follow set of B, which is the same as the follow set of S, which is the dollar sign. And my curly braces look like a three. Okay, and we reduce by rule number three. Let's look at state number six. Imagine we have the input C, then we end up in state number six, and we have also a shift. So we shift by one and end up in state number six. If we have the input D, we end up in state number five and also with a shift because once again, the pointer is shifting. And if we have a B as input, then we will just end up in state number seven. So maybe I showed wrong. So we are here, we have a B as input, so we end up in state number seven, okay. Phew. Okay, being in state number seven, let's look at state number seven, we have a reduction again. Again, because this is a B here in this place, we only write the reduction in the follow of B. This is supposed to be a B. Again, only the dollar sign and we have a reduction by rule number two. And that's it. We made the parsing table for our state machine. 
maybe you have the question in just pick this random case here. We have the dollar sign. Uh, what happens if we have the input D here? Let's say we have SD. What's happening now? I mean, we don't, we didn't write anything here, right? So that's an error. So everything that is not in here is going to be an error. So something that is not acceptable. Also, we have the reduction by rule number one, two, and three, but we never have a reduction by rule number zero. So we could write something like we go from here and write this. And let's say from my voice is going down. Okay, I hope that's better. For my pers personal view, this is totally fine, but it's just something that you don't need because it's totally clear that you have only this last thing left. I'm not sure if how a doctor or professor looks at this. Talking about the opinion of my professor, I never asked him, but um, he always ended up in this case at the end. He didn't write this one. So let's remove it. Okay, that being said, uh, check out the next video for understanding how to use this table on an input. Oh, I figured made a bad typo. This is going to be here, not here, okay. In state number six, you have the input D. You, of course, end up, you have the input D, right? Not the input dollar. So, sorry for that.